Hi, I'm Matt Wiederhold. Welcome to another edition of Medina Minute. Today we're going to sit down and talk with some of the faces and the people that you see around town and learn a little bit more about their stories and how they ended up in our town. Today we're here with Stephanie Fury from Life's Treasures. Stephanie, thank you so much for coming You're in welcome. and sitting down with me today. You're welcome. So, I know I sent out the, the email about doing this, and you wrote back like, "I'm not a notable person." <laughs> not a notable so person. So, so just to clear this up, Medina Minute is focused on the people and faces that we see around town that okay. we don't know, you know. But sure. but you certainly have a place in the community, an important part actually, yeah. of the community. So I'm I'm curious though, how did you end up in Medina, Ohio? Um, my husband is from Norwalk, Ohio, so we were living in New Jersey at the time. <laughs> is why you so you didn't move to Norwalk? No, we didn't move to Norwalk. Okay. Well, that's where Fair all enough. the in-laws are. We didn't go there. Smart. No, we Smart came woman. to Medina and loved the square, and that's what okay. sold us on Medina. Um, we lived in Cranford, New Jersey, which um, was kind of a town like this, square, cute, yeah. historical, and um, we came back and came here to Medina and loved it. Built a home here, gosh, 22 years ago. Oh, wow. And so we've been here that long. Yeah. And, um, so, I'm sorry, where did you grow up? Did I you... am from Helotus, Texas, outside of San Antonio, Helotus, Texas. Texas. But I was a flight attendant, met my husband, not on a plane. We met at a <laughs> bar, I said, and he was from Ohio. I was from New Jersey. We came back here. We had a five-year-old. We came back here. So, that's yes. fantastic. That's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot in just a few minutes. Uh -huh, yeah. Uh, so you're a flight attendant. How? What made you want to do that? Like um, that, 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 the self control you must have to be a flight attendant completely amazes me. Well, it's, it was just such a fun thing to do. Like I lived in Helotus, Texas. Never had been out of the state, you know, except for like a vacation. And yeah. um, this opportunity came up. I took it moved to Washington, D.C. and lived there oh, wow. for that. Met my husband at a bar, not a restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> he was living in New Jersey at the time. I ended up transferring and flew out of New York for that many years. And um, then we moved here and I commuted from here to New York. Oh my gosh. I would go to the airport here and then commute yeah. to New York and then fly out of New York. But 9-11 happened and they offered early gotcha. retirement. I was able to take all my benefits and retirement, and so in two, th I had 13 years, so I was able to take retirement, and yeah. I came back here and then stayed home because we had a six-month-old at the time. So, did you? I'm curious, as a flight attendant, were you doing international or? Uh -huh. I was doing both. Actually, it was easier wow. for me to do international with the kids because I would leave for you know on three days, off four days, on three days, okay. off four days. So okay. it was easier. My kids hated me when I left hated me when I got back. By the third day, they warmed up to me, and then I left again. <laughs> so. And is that how it's continued since their childhood? Yeah, or it's kind of like that right now. now. Okay. <laughs> right. Oh no, they both so, they yeah. both live in Cincinnati now. So 9-11 happened. You were able to retire. Yeah. Came here. Yeah. So just a scary time in our world. Yeah, it was. It was, a, it was. It was. I mean, so many people called going, you're not still, are you flying? Are you on a flight right now? But Mitchell was only six months old, so I was on maternity leave okay. and I was home. And I was getting ready to go back to work, though, in December. And they gave us a month to decide if we wanted to take the money and run and our flying privileges. And I said, okay. And my husband said, Good don't do you. this anymore. Wow. So, I, I'm so, yeah. curious, are you, are you a theater goer? Do you like musical theater, Broadway at all? No, we went a lot when we were in the city because my husband, we entertained a lot in the city, in New York City. Mm -hmm. So, yes and no. Okay, if you ever get the chance, if you haven't seen it, there's this incredible musical called Come From Away. Right. It's, it's about the flights that were really? diverted to Newfoundland. And it's, we saw it a couple years ago at Playhouse Square. They sit in and they said, it's a 90 minute show, there's no intermission. And I'm thinking, ugh, no intermission, that's a killer. It, it is, it, it's, I have goosebumps right now, you gotta look it up. It is this beautiful tale about the flights and the people on it, and that train, once that leaves the station, it is just constant, constant, constant. Seriously? And you walk out, I've, I've never sat through a show and literally could not talk at the end, 
because of the profoundness of what happened on stage. Oh, I we will gotta, definitely. So you got to see this thing. It oh, was definitely. Because I, because yeah. it was a really tough day anyway. Because I was New York I based. I bet it was a bit so of a tough day. I lost because we were American Airlines, so oh, we gosh. went into the towers, and I lost um, a pilot friend. He was a first officer wow. and a flight attendant, and the one that went down in D.C. to the Pentagon. It was two of my, we, they used to buddy bid together. They were a husband and wife team. Oh and I, you know, when you got on your flight, you were with this husband and wife team, but you know, they were yeah. friends too. I mean, it was, it was, a, it was an awful day. And yeah, you know. it's a, but the memorial's great. If you've not been to New York, it's yeah, great. Yeah. It's wonderful. Very cool. They did a wonderful job. Yeah. Wow. wow. So yeah. So you, you moved here with your husband. Yep. How, how did you get involved with Life's Treasures. What's, um, what's that story? Okay, well, I started volunteering at hospice when we were here on, you know, across from, or next to the tire place. What is the tire place down here? Did you ever know when we were here? We didn't the, have windfall. On North Court? Yeah, on North Court. On North okay. Court, um, I think it's a vape store now. <laughs> but oh, yeah, okay, I do know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was right there, and yeah. I started doing patient care because both my parents had passed away. Um, and no one was with them, and I thought it was important oh, to do th to be with them. They were sudden. I mean, it was a sudden thing. Yeah. But um, I started doing patient care, and um, I did that while Mitchell was at preschool. And then they decided in 2006 to open the store, Amy Warmer and Janie Parrish, <coughs> and um, they needed oh, I didn't management. Know that Janie was part. I yeah. knew Amy was part of it. Yeah. I didn't know Janie, Janie was. Parrish and Amy Warmer were crawling okay. on the ground finding coat hangers at the Dillers that closed up in Parma, and then um, <laughs> they needed management to run it. So we've been through quite a few, but I've been there since the beginning, and I'm the last one standing. But we yeah. now have Angel nice. Kiefer and Joanne, who are awesome. So how how did the impetus so has at the time, it was Hospice of Medina County. It was County. Hospice of Medina County, and we still are, all of our proceeds at Life's Treasure still stay within Hospice of Medina. We had to close the inpatient unit during COVID, right. but we just reopened it. Okay. And we have an eight bed facility, which is now, I mean, I hate to say it's doing well, but it is, but that's not a good, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of one of those things. It means, Hospice is one of those things, it's not easy to talk about. It's right. a terrible thing to go through, Right. but Bless everyone's hearts for having that. Because yeah. you, you, your parents passed and they were alone. Yeah. And, and at hospice, you have love and kindness yeah. and care about somebody's you. Somebody's with you, and it's important, I think. How how did they get the idea, or who came up with the idea to, hey, let's have a thrift store to support I, you know, hospice care? I'm not care. totally sure, but I think it was Amy and Janie were very into, you know, when someone passes away, you know, the family takes the special things they want and they do right. stuff. but most of the time you're adults and then there's a house full of furniture after everybody takes their stuff everybody takes their special sure. things that were either mother grandmother <laughs> grandfather and then you still have a house full of stuff and it was a great thing and a great opportunity to come to do this mm -hmm. and then you know give back to the services it does which provides a lot of different services you know that is not covered yeah so, so did the store currently is in Southtown on uh -huh. South Court. Is yep. that where the store originally started? was? We started okay. there two thousand six at thirty one thousand or thirty one hundred square feet and did an expansion to sixty nine, then to ten thousand nine and then we're almost at fourteen. Oh and we can't push east of Chicago <laughs> out because we like their pizza. Yeah. But Mike Rose has been wonderful during the whole so, thing. You're right. You you pretty much have the entire first we floor. We have the at this whole point. first floor except for the hair nook and the Medicaid oh my office. Gosh. So yeah. So it's a lot of work. That is a lot. And we do it all with volunteers. And it's all volunteers um, and all donations. It's all right? donations, yeah. Um, Except we just bought new phones, which we never buy new phones because we use the stuff we get donated, but they sure. stopped working. Yeah. So we finally bought new phones, I said. But, um, you know, and we do it with volunteers, which has been really tough because we lost a lot of them during COVID. Yeah. Not, not to COVID, but just they just felt like they didn't feel, their families didn't feel like they were, should put themselves at risk. Sure. So, no, 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 that yeah. makes sense. So stuff is donated from yep. families or from the, it doesn't have to be someone from no, hospice. No, it doesn't. And we community. get a lot of stuff from people moving. Okay. I, I, a lot of real estate agents, you know, they help us out too, nice. which is awesome. And then all proceeds, like you said, mm -hmm. go to support hospice of 
Medina you know, County. In Medina County, it could sure. be pet therapy, music therapy, massage therapy, you know, stuff that's not yeah. covered, which helps, you know. What's one of the strangest things you ever have donated? Uh. And, and in all fairness, I asked Tom from Habitat for Humanity. We had the same discussion. It's like, Tom, people pull up in a truck. What's the weirdest thing someone's trying to get you? I have to you? think about that one. Give me a minute. I'll, I'll, it's, you never know what you're going to find. There's a lot of crude things that you find in couches. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if you can take a guess on what we've found. And it is funny because our guys will go, that's not mine. Because we have oh old gosh. men in a truck. I have seven old men in a truck, I call yeah. them. And they go out every Monday and pick up furniture. And they'll come back and they the ones they found it. And they're like, that's not mine. It's not mine. That's hysterical. So that's kind of one of them. You also, as, as part of it, you also have the Christmas store. Yes, we do. Is, is that the official name? Yeah, there... so we call it Christmas Treasures. <laughs> Christmas and Treasures. And we open always, normally, the first or second week of, actually the second week of October, and we run, run it for six weeks. Yeah. And it's very profitable for hospice, and it's kind of like the happening thing in Medina. Everybody's like, oh my gosh, where's Christmas Treasures? Yes, where's... they are. It's a huge it's thing. It's intense. It's, in, it's a huge thing. It is, um, we... In six weeks, we made over seventy-one thousand dollars wow. in profit. That's a lot of snowmen and Santa Clauses. It's a lot of snowmen. It's a lot wow. of work. And this year, we did it with because um, one of our managers, Teresa, got COVID mm -hmm. and she was out for the whole season. So we oh did it with gosh. one manager and two part-time managers, and not a lot of volunteers. You guys are a moving product. <laughs> so there we go. What's what, what are some of your best sellers? Like when you go in the store, you have clothing, accessories, furniture, Furniture is probably our best set. Uh, furniture yeah. is our best. In fact, we got great stuff today. Furniture, the mid-century pieces right now are so hot. That's hot. It's really hot. Yeah. It's very good. But we sell a lot of clothes, too, because we're real picky about what we put out. Sure. No smoking, stuff like that. We try to keep the best of the best. And we donate on to Salvation Army what we can't keep. So. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. And the tool room. I'm sure you've been in the tool room. The tool room, yeah. It's Porter's Delight. There's something for everybody. It doesn't really matter what you like. You got it. That's true. That mm -hmm. is true. What? You're a busy woman. Uh -huh. <laughs> how, do you, how do you relax? How do you decompress from managing a store, dealing... That's not dealing. Managing a store, working with the public, right. overseeing the volunteers, the processing of all this stuff. Me um, mentally, how do you check out? Well, actually, um, I have a wonderful husband who's very, very, very good about it. Um, I do in the winter times. I come home, I get a glass of wine, and I do puzzles at night because oh, cool. it okay. turns my brain off. Okay. But in, and in the summertime, or the when it gets the weather gets nicer, I run. I come home and I run. Really? Okay. You know, and that's the one thing that gets you through it. But we have yeah. a great group, so it's easy. But there's Christmas. We're all a little. It's pretty intense down there. We're all pretty crazy. Then. Yeah. yeah. But you do have an incredibly fan, incredibly friendly group of volunteers. Yeah, They're we very do. friendly and jovial. They're wonderful. We couldn't do it without them. Yeah. I'm They're curious. Wonderful. You're a runner. Do, have you ever done like a 5K, 10K, yeah, marathon? Yeah, I've done our half marathon three really? times actually. Um, but I had a little accident and fell <laughs> in October and uh -oh. um, ended up with stitches and fractured two teeth. Oh so. my gosh. I decided to run inside during the yeah, winter months. Yeah, it's so. a good idea. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. With, I, I, I'm a huge collector, as you know. I've come into yes, the store. Yes, you do. Annalise. Anal, or do you, Annalise, Annalise. Yeah, Annalise, yeah, the little Annalise, Annalise the yeah. holiday things. Yeah. <laughs> good memory. <laughs> I always thought, like, it would be my dream job to kind of have your job working uh -huh. in a thrift store or something mm -hmm. like that. But then someone said, well, if you work there, you can't buy this stuff. Oh, it's no, got you other can't. Customers. Is, is there something that you collect? Uh, no, and I don't collect anything because I see what happens to these families okay. that end up with these house full of stuff, and they don't know what to do with it. And they're, I'm not a collect. I mean, I, I, and I probably wouldn't say out loud what I collected because then everybody Fair enough. at you Christmas, would get like 27 it would be of like them. a million of them, and I, I don't want. The, I no, I don't. No. It is no. You bring up an interesting point. We are addicted to stuff. Yeah, we are. We surround ourselves yeah. with furniture and tchotchkes. But at the end of the day, it's just stuff. It's just stuff. You know, is it is it hard? Is it hard getting people to part with the stuff because of the memories that are so inherent? Oh, that was grandma's chair. That was mom's uh -huh. china. Yep. 
Yeah. Sometimes. How do you help people through that? Well, you know, and, and this is really hard, like during COVID too, you know, you just wanted to hug these people, which I would ask, can I hug you? Because you just feel yeah. really bad for them because sure. this is this is their, maybe they can't give monetary, so they give up these things mm -hmm. that make a difference to us. And I sure. said, you just, I mean, most of them really just want to give because they're just so empowered or they just feel so wonderful after hospices come in and help yeah. them through the process probably that one of the toughest things of their life sure and they've done such a wonderful job that most of them are really really happy to give it up but then there's some things and if they are really attached to him you, you just have to you just listen to them and yeah, there's sure. usually a great story so you know and then you can tell that story to the next person who buys it that's which cool. is wonderful you know that's cool you know what um this town, this little community in which you've moved and, and raised your family. Right. What's kind of Stephanie's, if you have visitors come in from out of town, we're going to go here, we're going to eat this, we're going to see this, you got to do this. What, well, what's, your, what's your hit list visitors guide? Um, well, I tell them, of course, life's treasures. Of course. But the new farmer's table across the street from us is awesome. Yeah. They've done a great job. I love the square. The square is great. You know, got to go get a donut. Of course, you got to get a donut. Of course. Um, Coffee here, for sure, at yep. the Honey Bee Bakery. Sully's <laughs> is, you definitely have to go to Sully's. <laughs> what's what's your go-to donut? Um, like, it's dangerous for me to go in there, I'll be honest Well, no, I can only so have good. one, and then I get a half, and then I eat a quarter, and then a quarter, and a quarter, and a quarter, like I'm not gonna eat the whole donut. So you're gonna stretch so, it out. Yeah. yeah, I don't like chocolate, so I just okay. get all the crap on it, you know, like the fruity <laughs> pebbles. But I love lemon berry, because they have it too, so, you know. Said. And the wine bar is awesome. That, yeah. There's so many places that it's great here. I said, you know, and my daughter makes fun of us because she's like, oh, mom, you guys are just so Medina. I'm like, it's so great, <laughs> Kelsey. Like, time restaurant's great. I said, but yeah. she lives in Cincinnati and is moving to New York, so she's so way cooler than her parents. Totally so. cool. Cosmopolitan yeah. woman. She's so cool, yeah. I said. What, what do you hope for your kids? Like, they grew up here. Yeah. Um, what Kelsey, do you hope that they take from this community with them? Um... Mitchell's really good about it. Mitchell has his own little detail business. I mean, he's in Cincinnati at, at UC or whatever, but okay. um, he truly loves the square and he loves Medina or whatever. Yeah. You just hope that they take this small town and take it with them somewhere and mm. look for a place like this. In, and they'll see once they get older and they realize how much this town means. Yeah. I mean, right now it's so not cool no, just because they don't think it's cool. It's not. I said, but it's got such a quaint thing and people know people and people care about people that yeah. that's awesome. I think that's great. You know? Do you, if, if you decide to ever retire from your job, uh -huh. if, because I know you love it. <laughs> I do love what, it. Like if you were to retire, what's, what's your dream trip or what's the next chapter in your life? What would you love to do or accomplish? Well, my husband and I talk about this a lot. I'd love to put up do some sort of a foundation to help people and okay. stuff like this, especially kids and stuff yeah. like that. There's a lot of people out there that get forgotten and we'd love to do something like that, you know. Um, Tell me, I'm curious a little bit more about that. So a foundation for kids um, like with special you know, needs special or needs, something like they that. Just, I mean, they just have a tough road and their families have a tough road, you yeah. know, I think. That's the hardest part is that, you know, these kids, maybe they don't realize what's wrong with them, but their parents have this, it's a lifelong commitment. It's, mm -hmm. it's a commitment and there should be something to help these people, I think, you know. True. Um, That's really cool. Yeah. Dream trip. Dream trip. Money's no object. Take as many days as you need. Um, Where are we going? My husband and I, well, because we have flying privileges, so we can go anywhere. Oh, you still do? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Is that part of retirement? Uh huh. That's a really <laughs> yeah, cool it's perk. Really good. You just have to make sure that there's a seat on the plane, but it's. It's but really wow. okay. Nobody talks about that. That's amazing. Yeah, you get flying privileges. My kids get it. My daughter just got booted off because she's she got booted off at 26 or 25. So yeah. she's been so now she has to pay for her own tickets. But Mitchell has them through college. And That's I said, so cool. Um, but yeah, so we can go. But my husband and I, we want to go to Australia and go there for a couple of weeks and just <laughs> just to do that. A lot of people say that. So I have to ask. I, I asked um, somebody earlier. I don't. It was uh, Amy. Are you a reader? Um, yes and no. Okay. I'm going to read. We're leaving for Mexico on Friday and Thursday. Ooh, and where are you so going to Mexico? We're just going to Cancun. Gotcha. But we're Enjoy getting it. out of here. We haven't been anywhere, it seems yeah. like, in about five years. If you go to Australia, there's this writer named Bill Bryson. Okay. Great American humorist. He, he writes so deep. Right. That, like, I can read a few pages and I have to set it aside. Sure. But he wrote this whole novel about his travels to Australia and visiting all the different parts of it. And again, I don't think we as Americans realize how big that place is. Oh, it's huge. And it's an island, and 
There are things there that are literally nowhere else in the world. I, so see, I, that's what you, I'd like you to You gotta do. read it. We're gonna go it's for, cool. we'd have to go for a couple of weeks, because I don't wanna, just it's, the time change alone. It gets a continent, it's massive. It's huge, huge. Yeah. And, we're, and we would like to dive, you know, and stuff okay. like that, so that You're would be an nice. adventurous woman. Well, you know, did I you, try to be. Did you grow up, like, were you a tomboy girl? Tomboy I was a tomboy, up? I have four okay. brothers. I, I grew up with all boys. Okay. And yes, um, yeah, uh, a tomboy. And you survived. I survived, I'm very tough. Just ask, just I'm ask curious, my working where, men. <laughs> where are you in the chain? of siblings. Um, I have two older brothers. I'm a twin and okay. I have a, I have a twin brother. He passed away and then I have a younger brother. Okay. So yes. So Very cool. Kind of in the middle but they think I was a spoiled one because I was the girl which I wasn't. I had hey. whole different rules. Of course. Different rules. I love it. Stephanie thank you so much. Thank it's you so much. Absolute pleasure well, finally you sitting too. down and learning a little bit more about you. Thank and you. We'll and see good you luck in your adventure. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs>